What's up, vloggers? Trying to dumb come back at you again. Where you at, Justin? You behind the camera? The Bell Show your face. Right there. Say hi. We uh, had some work done. We never done a video like this before. I guess a little bit with. Uh, well, we can stand here like this, and I can hold it out like this. No, what's her name? With. Uh, Get over here on this side. The girl, the girl you used to work with. <clears throat> what? We done we done one video like this. I can't remember what it's called. I don't it's, know. It won't go quite wide enough like that. We'll just switch back and forth. But the the uh, it has to be perfect too, or we can't post it. Hey man, you there? And you see, we're, one about, perfectionist we're about the biggest jackasses in the world when it comes to recording. So Thursday, <laughs> Thursday, you all see we got Trey's no rhyme or reason to it. We got Trey's bike picked up, and well, technically my bike. Justin's picked up. junk KTM <laughs> has to go back to the shop. <laughs> yeah. Imagine that. Hey, everybody comment down below. I want to do it. Trey won't do it because he's scared. I want me and Trey and our other brother Eddie to line up on the same line. We'll see who comes out on top you of the race. You know what the sad part about that is? Here's a 32-year-old, 33-year-old kid that wants to compare himself to two old men. Oh, man. Because he can't be anybody's own age. <laughs> <laughs> so comment down below how pitiful that is. Hey, everybody comment to see if Trey will race. They say Trey needs to race. Comment that. Trey Justin, needs every to race. time we do a competition in the video thing, I beat you. Oh, I'll, every time. I'll lap you, racing. <laughs> lap you. I, I tell you one thing. You will never lap me in anything in your life. That would be Unless terrible. I'm dead. Hey, I'll never <laughs> forget that. Right, our other, shut up. Our other brother we... lapped me. I thought, man, this is the worst it's ever been in my life. Yeah, when you get lapped, you need to go home. It's time to shut it off. You know Buddy, that is a hurt. That is a, that is a pretty... Kicking pretty, the nuts, isn't it? All, I got about three feelings. That hurt everyone. That hurt everyone. <laughs> so the deal is, this is Adam... Adam Gray. That video will be out Thursday, right? Yeah, this is Adam Gray. He's a bike mechanic. True. And the, and the first thing is you guys are going to ask is what happened to his arm? Because I know that's what everybody does. Oh, yeah. We I get 10,000. We're 20,000. There's, no, there's no camera work going on here. <laughs> Arm's gone. Arm's gone. Okay. He gone. He gone. <laughs> okay, so now he's going to tell you what happened to his arm. Years, dates, what happened, the whole you gotta, story. You got to be specific because uh, they'll want to know everything. It Where was, you came from? Yeah, I mean, I'm from northern Kentucky, born and raised. Um, Started racing the National Enduros in 2014. Had a pretty good year. Managed to sneak away with the number one plate in my class. Wow. Was practicing for the next year. It was uh, April. We were practicing getting ready for the next Enduro. And I had a weird incident with my bike where I was coming down a hill. And I whacked the throttle pretty good because it was a little damp to come up the other side. And the throttle hung. Well, the bike started to, you know, move out, wheelie out. So I let, you know, just gonna slide off the throttle. Back of it. Throttle hung means the throttle stuck wide open. Throttle stuck wide open. So the bike's just gonna go. I'm gonna stay. Live your own life, bike. I'm out of here. You know. So I slid so off, the back, off the back. Pushed off the back. I'm standing there, letting it. He can go do whatever it wants now. Right. Well, it freaking loops out and does damn near a backflip and comes back and freaking the hill pulls it down and it lands on me, knocks me down and sucks this arm into the tire while it's spinning wide open. So I ended up grabbing the tire with this arm, which in hindsight wasn't the greatest idea because yeah, I tore up this arm ugh. in my natural reaction there. You had to get it to stop. Luckily, a friend came over and got her shut down, but uh, it had done enough damage where they couldn't couldn't save the arm. There were, so, so was the arm ripped totally off at that point? Nope, it was still there, but there were rubber marks all the way down a bone. So yeah. they're so just really so basically just skinned it. it. Basically just skinned it. a brand so. new tire on it too. So yep, that tire help. had whatever miles I put on it that day, about three or four. So she so, was nice and nice and fresh. So to, so to reiterate, so come over here to this bike real quick. Were you on a, were you on the good brand, the KTM? Uh, I was on a Husky. Oh, you weren't on a good brand. I'm just, <laughs> it was so, just a blue KTM. So when the bike, so the bike flipped over backwards and it, did it land, its tire landed on your chest, right? Yep. I've got some scars up here and it completely ate through my chest protector. Okay. You know, so I've got almost a ring where the tire was and chain was wow. gone. So, so did you, did you grab with this arm or did it? Did, that arm sucked in. That, that arm, arm just got sucked in and it was so, stuck in there. So did it go through here or did it? Where, nope, where, it was right here, buddy. Oh, it went there. Right okay. there. So it went above this and, and it sucked it in. and it, it sucked it right in. I couldn't do a daggone thing. Was it burning out like on your, on your foot? Where was it mainly st stuck? From my elbow down. Elbow down. Yep. So my hand looked perfect and my elbow looked decent. But they ended up having to take the elbow too because of the tearing action from the tire. It tore all the ligaments, the, all the ligaments and you know uh, veins and everything up further. So, so it was up. literally your your whole bone was it's just hanging out. Yep. Wow. Yep. So it looked like you took a chicken leg and just basically skinned it. Exactly. God. Still had a perfectly good hand. I got to sit there in the hospital for seven days and watch that thing freaking die, you know, while they were trying to save the arm. And then they took the... Took, okay, you know, so, so you went, so what, so right... So wait, I got I got yeah. hold on, hold on, we're getting, you're getting ahead of me here. So when this happened, were you bleeding? 
Not as much as you would think. Luckily, uh, one of the guys I was riding with was smart enough to tear a sleeve off his jersey. Tourniquet. Got me tourniqueted pretty quick. So, you know, as the horror gruesome scene you think you would see wasn't that bad, you know? I mean, you'd think the bike would be covered in blood and everything. I mean, there was there was blood, but it wasn't like, you know, some horror flick murder scene. Most of it probably anything. got threw away when the tire was all throwing it everywhere. Probably. Right, right, probably. right. Probably. Right. So... There's so then, a, so then you, so they, he tied they, a tourniquet, yeah. and then you're, you still, you was, you had a jersey on. Did you have a jersey? A it point? was all gone by oh, that ripped point. Ripped it totally yeah. off. Okay. Yeah. So, so did they call a helicopter or where what? Well, luckily one of them had taken off. Okay. And uh, to go call nine one one, and one, another one came back with a side by side to get okay. me, get me out of there. And uh, they didn't know how severe it was, so they sent an ambulance, which was luckily just right down the road. And by the time they got me in there, he's like, "Man, I can probably have you there." before life flight will get here right. and come back. Yeah. Right, right. And I remember, I was like, yeah, man, just give me the scene, you'll be all right. He's like, man, I'm sorry, but we're gonna take a little longer ride than you see, or to, to you see, because you yeah. need to get up there. So you, so like, what, what was the pain level, any pain? There was, I mean, it was probably the worst thing I've ever done, but it wasn't like what you think it would be. You know, it wasn't so bad that, I mean, I never blacked out or anything, and it wasn't what you, you were conscious the whole time. The whole time, wow. so you were walking around. Were you there? With it flopping. No, you yeah. were there. Okay. You were walking around with it just flopping and everything. Yeah, like I mean, I could still be my shoulder, so I just put it above my head and just kind of for the blood, so it didn't, didn't look anymore. I was like, wow. I looked once, and I was like, oh it's man, it's like cutting your finger with a knife. Like cutting your finger with a knife. You don't want to look at that's it. That's right. Day. I was like, I'm not just, I'm just not gonna pay much attention to that right now. And wow. So you made it to UC, and you were there for how long? Seven. A month. You were there a month. I was there a month. So the first week, they tried to save the arm. Eventually said, man, we're going to have to amputate the arm. Wow. So they took it below the elbow. And then, you know, the doctor came in after surgery and he's like, man, not sure we're going to be able to save that elbow. I was like, man, you know, well, that completely changes the dynamic of prosthetics because every joint you lose, you lose that mobility. So if I'd have had the elbow, I'd have been a lot more functional with the prosthetic. So I sat there and I was like, man, can we try? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'll give you some time. See if it heals up. We might be able to do a skin graft, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. So I sat there for about another week and he finally came in and, you know after looking at it you know a couple days he's like buddy we're either taking the elbow or you're finding a new doctor and wow. i was like well i guess that's that isn't it freaking so let's go back in and get the elbow and then i just had to sit in there and recover they had this arm completely bandaged so once they you know and then we they started the doing light, the skin grafts and stuff on so this one you didn't even scratch your ass could you buddy there's nothing worse you know than being in a race you know out of race that you know you're still supporting other riders and having to come out of a portalette with uh, your significant other and run into people you know. So you until you've had your butt wiped at a portalette by somebody else, you ain't lived. No, I don't get I don't get embarrassed about nothing. That's <laughs> yeah. no big That would embarrass yeah. me. I yeah. wouldn't yeah. Like you that. haven't lived until you're at a portalette, you know, with somebody else wiping your ass. <laughs> wow. So you were in the hospital for one month. One month. Okay, and then and then you got released? I got released and okay. they started working on this arm. And uh, you know, they pulled a skin graft. I mean it's not real visible, but um, all right there. Yep. Well, that don't look bad, does it? Nah, so they pull, tore a big chunk out of that and start sticking it other places, you know. Trying to get you back to where yep. you can at least do some stuff. Yep, so it took probably three, three and a half months, I'd say, before most of the bandages and stuff were off and I could actually start doing something. So here, getting fitted for prosthetics and things like that. So so you don't you don't ever wear a prosthetic, or, or do you wear it? I don't. I've got a what they call a myoelectric, which is an electric one, which works off just like, a, let's say, you flex your bicep. It would close the hand, you flex your tricep, it would open the hand. Really? Yeah, but you start getting sweaty in them and they move around and the electrodes don't hit where it you want work, them to, work. so then it doesn't work. So yeah. I kind of quit using that one. And then I got a what they call a body powered one, where it's got like a strap that goes around your other arm. And if you like squeeze your shoulders together, it'll raise the elbow up. And if you push your arm out, it'll open like the little hook up or whatever. Okay. And I tried using that and it's not real great either. So, you know, usually I could tuck stuff around and kind of manipulate it. It's about as good as I can with the prosthetic with, and be faster. Right. So I do have one for riding the motorcycles and I wear it every time. Well, that's it's the, actually the, legit. That's the biggest thing about this story. So this was in 2000, April, 2014, right? Well, wait a minute, how, how old were you when this happened? Yeah. Uh, 34. So you are what, how old are you now? 40. Okay, so seven years, give or take, whatever it's yep. been. Yeah, so, it was 15. So, okay, so so going from going from being totally a normal person, not that you're not normal now, well, but yeah. you know what I'm trying to say, <laughs> to that, like what's the biggest, like if you could say the biggest thing besides getting your butt wiped, like what else has been the hardest thing to learn how to do? 
Uh, well, now you can wipe your butt, can't at you? Least you, you? At least, yeah, yeah, at least, at least you had your right-handed. At least I'm right functional, man. You were right-handed to boot. Right? I'm right-handed. So that oh, helped yeah. a little bit. That God, helped a little you bit. You had God your corner on that one. That's you know right, right, man. Right. That's right. Yeah, so yeah. what's the hardest thing would you have to say has been the hardest thing you had to... Man, move. picking up objects, you know? Like, you get a box or something, and you just can't do it, and I try to do it, or, you know, like a cooler, just things like that, that you know, just I, I can't do. The other stuff I can usually find a work way around, you right, know, right. or whatever. Little things you take for granted. Yeah, but just like, man, picking up everyday things, you know, or even your pants. You Like, I can't do a button, so I have to buy real, you know, fatter kid pants than I even would wear. Right. And pull them up buttoned up, and then just cinch my belt tight. Oh, I guess that works. Don't, yeah. never, people don't think about stuff like yeah, that. That'd be the yeah. thing going through my mind. It's like, man, yeah. what, 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 what is going to change here tremendously? That's, yeah, it's, you know. And you just, well, I put you shoes on. I tie shoes. But I got them electric or elastic shoelaces, man. Yeah, I mean, the only way to do it. Yeah, huh? yeah. The freaking lock laces. Yeah. You know, luckily I was kind of lazy and did that before. So there's no, no change there. <laughs> so that, that was in April. You can always go back to the Velcro, too. Those are in stock. Well, I mean, I'm, not, I'm not about it. <laughs> so that, that was in April of 2014, right? 15. And, 15. Yep. And then, and then how, how long was it before, like, when that initial happened, was the thought, I'm never getting back on a dirt bike again? No, man, we never we never crossed through, we never did do that bridge, you know? I knew what the accident happened and how freakish it was. And, you know, buddies were coming in and visit me in the hospital and they're like, oh man, you know, we'll take care of your bikes, we'll get them up for sale. And I was like, no, man, we're keeping all of that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're like, you're gonna ride again? And I was like, yeah, and as soon as, you know, I guess I had said that, everybody just came out in support and was like, okay, this city is gonna ride again. Yeah. So, you know. That's just, that was the path we took from then on. So how long did it take you to get back on a bike? Um, so from April, I ran my first race again in January at the National Endurance. Is that right? Yeah. The same year. Or, well, you basically, you know, year, yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't yeah. even a year off. Yeah. It wasn't even a year off. And I was back at my first race. That's yeah. impressive. Yeah. So the, so the prosthetic, it, it hooks on. Is it like a, I've seen his bike at his shop before. You just, you take this grip off, right? This. Yep. You okay. want me to hold that for a minute? You get over here. Yeah. So he takes he takes the. What all do you take loose on this, Adam? It's the, you take the left grip off, and then you take. I take the left grip off, and I'll rearrange this just so it's a little bit out of the way. But that part will actually slide on, and it works kind of like an air chuck, where it'll plug in, and it's got a tether that goes to my other glove. So when this glove comes off, it pops that quick release that you would use on so like an So you won't air get fitting. hung on the bike. So I don't get hung on the bike, and it breaks like what, what you'd consider the wrist. Okay. So the hand part always stays on the bike okay and it breaks at the wrist so you just it's like a quick connect like, like an airline like you said man. exactly so, so yeah ball detent so so and then obviously he has to run a recluse so it's, it turns the bike into an automatic so he doesn't have to worry about clutching right yep yep so how weird was that getting back on the about getting used to that that would be crazy man i'll let you know when i figure it out <laughs> uh, it's definitely slowed me down you know which you know that that happens you know even with just getting older um so, you know, I mean, it, it's still like, uh, I used to like to do a lot of the technical stuff and, you know, even some of like the Tennessee Knockout Extreme Enduro, oh my gosh. which I've gone out a couple times and tried that. And it's just, I can't manhandle the bike enough with the prosthetic. So that, I do miss that kind of stuff, but man, I can still get out and ride, yeah. you know, and then, you know, every now and then if I race, I'll beat a couple people. And I'm like, it, you know what? You just got beat by that fat one arm guy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's something I would say to him. You just got beat by a one arm guy. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what we were talking about it man I, if it if that happened to me i mean kudos to you because it, well, that's it, what i was going to say what about the depressed mode i mean did you go in depressed at man, all I, mean, I have my highs and lows but really when i came out of it i thought it was just an accident you right. know i hadn't really processed that the arm was gone and never coming back yeah so i just kind of was like oh man this is another freaking dirt bike wreck i'll i'll get over it i'll yeah. get over it and then you know all that kind of started going away but by then I was getting back on the bike and actually starting to ride because you know it took a few months to hit that point and then it kind of turned into like okay well what can I do yeah. and then I had so many challenges and things I was looking forward to that it just kept my mind off of it yeah. long enough that I just rolled on right with it well, there's no you point know? being that you I mean you got to stay positive yeah you know I mean? yeah I mean you know it was where were you working when this happened uh, Northern Kentucky Motorsports. Okay, so you had an actual job. Yep. So then, how long did you stay working there when you when you came? What what happened with that? Did you keep working there? Kept working there until okay. they closed. Yep. Okay. And then when they closed, then you started your own thing. Yep. Okay. Started our own and that's thing. where we're at now. He's got yep. his own. He's got his own little, basically motorcycle repair. Yeah. Business type thing. Yeah. Right? We just don't do any sales. Right. No, right. No sales. So the 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 next thing is, do we know what caused the bike to stick wide open? 
there there were some issues with those throttles where they had a little turnbuckle in them like a little where the cable would run around this little pulley oh so obviously it was carbureted wasn't it yes okay. it was carbureted and just every now and then they had an issue where they'd get hung up underneath that and yeah that's just Trey, Trey had a 660 uh yamaha grizzly four-wheeler that he actually got a tree branch underneath the throttle cable. It stuck wide open. And it, and it, oh, and it wow. stuck it wide open then. It actually took our, our our other brother's daughter, our niece, uh, Katie. She was sitting on the front tank with him. She had a helmet on, luckily, because when we ride four wheelers, we hardly ever. We were just, I, we idle around, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Which, and it, it flipped over and crushed the helmet. Crushed it like a like a, like an egg. Oh my God. She wouldn't have had a helmet on, she'd have been dead for sure. Yeah. The, the, the actual the actual brake reservoir crushed the crushed the helmet. Yeah. You know what? Normally, if you're used to riding fours, if you're flipping, you know you pretty much know to push yeah, it off. Yeah. Like roll grizzly, yeah. heavy, heavy. But it was a it was a it was a crazy. That's a big deal. one. Yeah. That's a monster. So, so now, so then you started your own business, and and believe it or not, I actually think it works with you going to races and stuff because I think it draws attention to yourself. Yeah. You like board yeah, it does. It does. You know, and I've never. You know, if I saw, you know, one, heck, I even see one arm people, you know, or somebody missing a leg, and I'm like, man, I wonder what happened to them. Right, right, right. You know? Well, not so, only that, it drums up a conversation, but how much, and then how much harder it is for you to do things. Yeah, so yeah. I, I think it. And believe it or not, I even asked permission to, could we do a video? I just didn't come out being a rude person that I am and say, hey, dude, what happened to your arm? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's no big deal, man. I mean, heck, I work, you know, I'm still in the motorcycle business, so I tell this story probably three or four times a week, you know, yeah. somebody's. Yeah. I think, always curious. I think you ride a you ride a KTM 350. XC. KTM 350 now. Okay. XCF. Yep. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's a. Uh, I, I thought it was. We we've met one other guy and we told him this story. I can't remember how. I don't know if Trey was there or not. I can't remember. I he was, lost his hand. The guy lost his hand. Uh, yeah. He lost his his right hand, which is throttle hand. Yeah. I mean, I guess you could move. Could you move your throttle to your? I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose either one of mine personally. Yeah, man, it's not a great time. It's not a good time. Know. It's not a good thing. You can survive it, yeah. but you know, I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't recommend it. But that guy, you know. it's like going to jail. It, it's yeah. like, you can you can do it, but I wouldn't recommend. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend. It. <laughs> that, that guy we were out riding, and he was using a closed pin. So the harder he would bite down, is the more throttle the bike would get. I don't know how in the world you get used to that. I don't either. That's man. Well, he yeah. can. Adam can probably tell you. It's like anything else. You got to adapt. Just I figure guess. it out. I mean, you know, I can't imagine what that's like. Yeah. You know. 10 years ago, I couldn't imagine what riding with one hand would be like. So, yeah, exactly. I guess you can guess exactly. you do what you got to do, man. But, so, there never was a depressed state, huh? You just kind of... I never had, like, a big, long, like, sit at home, like, I'm going to freaking walk in oncoming traffic. Right, or right. Put a pistol in my like mouth. That, you right, know, right. and I credit a lot of it to everybody that was around me. Just You were married when it happened, too, right? I was, yeah. yeah. You guys are still together? No, unfortunately. Oh, you're not. So, that may have been one thing that, you know, uh, I kind of lost from, from the arm. You know, I did have some depression and stuff with right, that. Right, right, so, right. That's understandable. You know, that I actually was, had a buddy of mine that, uh, not to interrupt you there, but we were out and he uh, got run over by a boat and lost his leg. Oh, man. Lost it from the knee down. That happened right in front of me. We drug him in the boat and that thing was squirting blood like 30 feet in the oh, air. Oh, my God. Luckily, there was a nurse there to try and turn a kit. But anyway, he had to be air, air carried. It was in, it happened in Cumberland. And the same thing happened to him and his wife. She left. Yeah, know? I mean, she didn't leave, yeah. but you know. Well, I mean, I, I mean, it, it was yeah. the same deal. He kind of went yeah, through the. Yeah, man, you know, we just kind of, I kind of went my own way. You yeah, know, I can't imagine so I think what the arm kind of, you know, spearheaded some of that. But. Well, the big thing is you didn't get hooked on drugs and all that kind of. Yeah. No, stuff, no, yeah. man, they threw a bunch of those painkillers at yeah. me too. And... So well, crap, we wanted to hear the. We wanted to hear the. And I'm sure so did you also. There you go. That's the explanation. Yeah. <laughs> we wanted to. Put That's this... the hot mess of missing the arm. <laughs> We wanted to put this video up first because uh, Thursday, you all see, we got our bikes back with suspension and Trey's bike actually got electric start. That's, for people that don't know, that's very uncommon for a YZ 252 stroke to have electric start on it. So now If you guys any work done to your bikes or anything like that, go to uh, right Great Power Sports on Facebook. Send us a message, man, and we'll be uh, we'll be happy to help you out. Yeah, yeah that's he said that's the best way to get a hold of them is uh, look them up on Facebook and give them a follow. And yeah. you guys do more of the motorcycle, you do side-by-sides, four-wheelers. Side-by-sides, some four-wheelers. Okay. We just don't really do street, you know? We do mostly dirt. So yeah, anything dirt related, man, we're right. pretty much in. And I don't know if we said it in another video, but you guys are located basically in Florence, Kentucky. Yep, right yep. off Mount Zion Road. Yep. So, Justin said, Justin said, tell him what you said. Intro, I said Mount Zion, Kentucky. I was thinking of that. I was so mad about it raining. Now look at it. Now it's I know. Up. Now it's just sweaty and hot. The yeah. ground's still too wet to ride. Yeah, we, we, uh, we got hit with every bad bad thing here. And the KTM's going back to the shop. The Yamaha's going home. Typical Jap bike solution there. Japs go home and the junk Australians have to go back to the shop. Tell them. The, the, uh, well, uh, the problem uh, is right there, the, our dad re installed our recluse wrong, so I don't, mine's junk and Trey's is working. <laughs> he put mine in good. <laughs>
But thank you all a ton for all the support. Subscribe here. Subscribe to our new channel, The Bell Life Bangs. Subscribe to Ask The Bell Life. Check us out on thebelllife.com for all our jackass comedy videos. We still upload three days a week on there, and all the links will be in the description. If you know Camera yeah, shut off, but we're back. It got a little bit too hot. That's the, the outro of the video. We'll see you all later. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Thanks.